What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and the only reason I am holding this shoe, this Reebok Forever Energy 3, is for a prop. This video is about how to fit your running shoes or how to get the correct fit when you're buying running shoes. This just happens to be my shoe de jour, shoe de moi, shoe de un. Yeah, this is definitely my shoe of the year. Anyway, fit is arguably, or I know you know what, it's not arguable. Fit is the most important thing when you're buying running shoes. If they don't fit well, you're in for a world of problems. A poor fit and running shoe could leave you with blisters, bruising, missing toenails, tingly toes, plantar fasciitis. It goes on and on. It is definitely worth your time to get your running shoes fitted properly before you start running in them. Obviously in a perfect world, we would go get fitted for new running shoes every time we got them. We don't live in a perfect world. We're probably limiting the amount of time we spend outside. We don't always wanna to go to our local running shop to be fitted. So here are just a few things so you can know that your shoes are fitting as they should. However, I have to recommend getting professionally fitted at least once a year. Feet do change over time. Your feet do get bigger. They generally don't get smaller. Remember, you're on your feet every day. Those muscles get tired. Arches can drop, making your feet longer. Get fitted once in a while if you can. First things first, when you are trying on your running shoes, I want you to pull out the type of socks that you are going to be wearing on most of your runs. This is important. Don't just grab any kind of socks. You're testing your shoes to fit. You may as well test them in a real world scenario. Wear running socks when you're trying on your shoes. Because our feet tend to swell as we run, if you're not gonna try on new running shoes immediately after a run, try them on at the end of the day. At the end of the day, our feet are at the biggest that they're gonna be throughout the day. So there are a couple different ways to test if your shoes are actually long enough for your foot. The first way is to put your foot in the shoe and put your thumb at the end. You should have between a half and one inch of space or about your thumbs width between the end of your longest toe and the end of the shoe. Now for me, my second toe is actually longer than my big toe. So I have to make sure that I have enough space between the end of my shoe and my second toe. You can also put the foot in the shoe, slide it all the way to the front, and then see if you can slide your thumb in the heel. I find that is not the best way to do it. It's, it's much easier to just put your foot in and hold on the front. But if you don't want to do that, that's always another way. You can also remove the insole, put it on the ground and step on it. Make sure your foot is lined right up with the back and then you'll be able to get a clear indication of where your toe comes in relation to the end of the shoe. Now, if you're shopping for new running shoes, it is important to remember that most shoes fit differently from other shoes. Not really surprising, is it? But how a shoe fits should remain the same. Across your midfoot and heel, the fit needs to be not tight, but snug. Your toe box needs to have enough room for your toes to be able to wiggle and move around. Now, if your shoe is too tight across the midfoot or across the heel, you might start noticing that you're getting hot spots when you're out running. I know that in the past, when I've run in shoes that are too narrow in the toe box, I start getting a little, little hot spot on the outside, right on my little toe. If your running shoes are a little loose, your foot's gonna be moving around inside them more than they should. Now this is a problem, especially in the heel, because if you start getting heel slip, as you rack up that time in the shoes, you're gonna start getting blisters in the back. Some people have thinner ankles or heels than others. They have to be particularly aware. You may need to get a heel pad or a heel cup to help fill out that space in the back. There's also different lacing techniques that you can use to help you lock down that heel. I'll link to a video of my lacing techniques right up here. So you know you're supposed to have that thumb width of space right between your longest toe and the end of the shoe. What happens if you don't? Well, if you start getting bruising on your toes or you are losing toenails. That could be an indicator of an ill-fitting shoe. Now you've probably heard lots of stories of runners. It's like a badge of honor to run a marathon and then you lose a toenail. It's not so much a badge of honor as a poor fit and shoe. If you find you're getting blisters on your toes, it could be because the toe box isn't big enough. That is why it's so important to get the right fit. Make sure your toes can wiggle. If you ever find you're getting blisters on the ball of your foot, it could mean that the shoe is just a little wide and your foot is just moving around inside a little too much causing friction. And again, if you're getting blisters anywhere on your heel area, it's because your foot's moving around in the heel. You've got heel slip. People generally have one foot that's a little bigger than the other. It's important when you're buying running shoes to make sure you are buying a shoe for the bigger foot. Shoe volume is a measure of the actual space inside the shoe. A good indicator of correct shoe volume is by looking at the eyelet chain. Take two fingers, put them across the top eyelets. If you have about two finger widths of space between the top eyelets, your shoe volume is about right. If you only have one finger space between the top eyelets, it means the volume is a little big. You're having to cinch those laces together in order to get the right lock down across your midfoot. If you have three fingers between your top eyelets, probably means you don't have enough volume in the shoes. Now, if you don't have enough volume in a shoe, it may not be a case of just going to a wider shoe. Try different models, try different brands, and see what works for you. And keep this in mind, shoes that you wear on a regular basis, like your dress shoes when you go to work, they should be about a half size smaller than your running shoes. Ideally, your shoes should disappear from your consciousness when you're running. If you're aware of your shoes when you're out there putting in the miles, it's just gonna, just gonna weigh on your mind. It's gonna drive you crazy. Buying a pair of running shoes that fits your foot correctly will save your running. running is 
isn't easy all the time, we have to remove all the barriers. Starting with a shoe that fits good is a good first step. Remember, running shoes are nothing more than a tool that's helping you do a job. Choose the right tool and you'll be able to do that job more efficiently, more often, and without pain. One more thing, once you have found that running shoe that fits you perfectly, I want you to track your miles on that shoe. Tracking your miles is a great way of finding out when that shoe actually dies or when you have to replace it. Now this next statement is going to be arguable, but I would say a good average that running shoes will last is between three and 500 miles. No doubt you have seen people that have put thousands of miles into the shoe, but as a general rule, three to 500 miles is a good benchmark. Now it's a very unfortunate reality that the more expensive shoes you buy are gonna last the least amount of time. That lightweight foam does not hold up to a lot of miles, but they're light and you can run faster in them. So it seems like a pretty good trade-off. Running shoes are an experience. They make your experience of running better. We all know you're supposed to spend your money on experience rather than things. I recall something about that leading to happiness. That's why I class my running shoes as experiences because it's a great excuse to spend money on experiences. You're welcome. Now go tell your significant other that I said that and get online, buy a new pair of shoes. And if you are buying online and you're buying a new pair, buy it a couple of sizes. Check the return policy first so you can make sure you can return the shoes that don't fit, but buy a half size down, a half size up from what you normally buy. That way you're sure to get the right size, send the others back and you'll be good to go. My friends, if you like running shoes, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Thank you so much for staying all the way to the end of the video. I publish new running videos at least twice a week. Be kind, be happy, run well. See you in a couple of days.